I'd say to you that that uh, if if you were dealing at that level, yes, I mean it would appear to be important. But I I want to ref, I want to refine that now, and, and and actually I might sound like I'm contradicting myself by saying, in hindsight now I don't think it is as important as we might think, because we haven't dealt with some of the most fundamentals in their system. The majority of their power comes from our behaviour, not as a general executor, and our behaviour in the absence of a will. So once those things are established, I believe the question of whether we are a resident or a non-resident becomes redundant. And I kind of think the system has actually been kind of happy that people have been going down those rabbit holes because when they go down those rabbit holes, they're not dealing with the big, big picture. You see what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, they'd rather, you, yeah, they'd, they'd rather you deal with something that was small than deal with something that is you know, the source of everything. Yeah? Right. It seems to be the determination I was kind of coming to after the last three talk shows seem to be yeah. moving me away from the thought of that because it doesn't make any sense to worry about that. Well, look, the good, the good, the good thing is, and, and again, I pay homage to, the, to the, the pioneers that have done the work, by identifying the non-resident alien is to identify the whole concept of enemy of state and the whole concept of, of treason against the people, which I think is really important. I think it's important to know what the ruling elite did but as far as the big picture is concerned, I think it's down the list in terms of establishing your status. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. okay? Yeah, that kind of answers that question. Thanks. Right, okay. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you for coming back on the phones and with your questions. All right, back to the chat questions here. Uh, Frank, could you say... Uh, and use the terms sole shareholder and general executor and beneficiary of the corporation, Mr. All Caps, using the All Caps uh, name, leaving only the position of trustee left. Yeah, I think, um, the, the, firstly, uh, I, I had uh, listed in a couple of things the role of the general executor and the beneficiary. The beneficiary is, is a matter of presumption. And in their system, the beneficiary has no standing unless the court evokes itself as a court of equity. And when it does, then the beneficiary is really making a pleading. So the role of beneficiary in standing up, um, I would say, is, is largely uh, irrelevant. It's there, sure. But... I would say first and foremost, it's the role of being general executor and general guardian. Um, and yes, of course, the roles that it leaves ultimately is the role of trustees. But I think as we become more comfortable in defining and, and standing up for who and what we are, then I think what we would want to um, be saying uh, is stating the thing that is key and not overstating I mean, I, I've, I've been guilty of it before. You, you want to appear to be, you know, commander of your own destiny. And so, you know, you, you say you call yourself the reverend this or whatever to try and establish the document into their system to say you're a minister or you're something else. Um, at the end of the day, the key concept here is that you are the general executor. And whether you are or you are not the sole shareholder and beneficiary is irrelevant. That's what I would say. All right. Hopefully, uh, Terry there. Might hear Terry. Might have lost Terry there. Yeah. Can you hear us, Terry? I yeah. Do. yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, there was a question regarding filling out the form for a passport. Do we want to get back to that uh, today, or or put that? So next week, um, it's a simple question. Um, is there a way of filling out the form? And, and uh, Alpha hit on a little bit regarding a non-resident alien status so that it's not placed as a pauper. So is there anything else to use besides putting a VC uh, in front of the, an 
an autograph or signature, any other I, thoughts Yeah, on you that? see, pa passports are an example where the, the knowledge of non-resident alien becomes relevant. Um, but I would say that uh, I am not in a position at the point to sort of give uh, suggestions or ideas on filling in or not filling in passports. One, there's going to be different styles in different places. So the method in the States is going to be different to the method in Canada, to Australia, to, to other places, England. So to that extent, it's going to be different in different places. Um, so I'd like to, if I could, ask that that question be resubmitted next week and, and let's see if we can get some more specific answers. I don't want to be saying things that I'm not 100% on, so and that's what I'm not 100% on at this moment. Okay, very, very good. It would be wonderful to have the information on, you know, doing the form correctly from the beginning. I agree. I agree. So let's let's make that a priority for, for something to come back on next week. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, next question. I'm hearing the echo again, and the echo went away just a little while ago. Uh, all right. It might be the streaming audio on your side, Terry. I'm not streaming. Oh, okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. Uh, since the IRS and State Tax Commission, let me make sure I've got everybody else muted. All right. Since the IRS and State Tax Commission are conspiring to take my entire paycheck and both ignored the EDPs I sent, would it be uh, dishonorable, I'm not sure, I'm going to have to pick up and find the rest of this question, dishonorable to apply for benefits such as unemployment if I cannot hold my job under this stress. I do not want to, want to uh, do not want their taxes, so I should not apply for benefits. But if they will not allow me to honorably withdraw, is there an issue accepting what they offer? Well, I'm very sad to hear that, and 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 I'm I'm very sad. There's a lot of there's a lot of awful things that the system is doing, and one is taking people's money to the point that they are in a worse position than if they were on employment benefits. I mean, it is it is awful, absolutely awful. What I what I would say to to the person asked that question is that with the information that we are dealing with, the IRS is very responsive to this question of your status of being intestate in being allowed to run roughshod, and in the absence of addressing the presumptions that we described, I. I want to put a personal apology to this person that the information on the sites were not yet at a position or have not yet been in a position to knock off the presumptions that the IRS or in fact any other agency is using against us. I hope that you see in the last few weeks that we are trying to redress this in the information that we're presenting now. So what I would say to you is if you can, it's entirely up to you, your life and what you do, but if you can give us the opportunity and the patience over the coming week in the new information that's coming on, we, we will be reserving certain things like the EDP for specific types of action and in its place we will be looking at other remedies that are far more specific to the IRS, then after you've looked at that, I would love to see your thoughts. But I, uh, I'm sorry to hear what you're going through. And right now, I can't really offer you, other than the audio on the talk shoes and the updated canons, I can't offer you any kind of specific document that would get you into a better position potentially. But um, please, uh, I know that you and many people are in... in in uh, difficult positions and honestly we're working and I'm working as fast and as best I can with many great people to get something practical up there to show you. So that's really, I can't say any more other than I'm sorry to hear the situation 
and there is a way to tackle it. And the EDP process, there was nothing deficient in the EDP process, but the, the system has shown an unwillingness to respond to our private expression, and they are really hiding behind their own public form. And unless it is expressed in a public form to a form that they comply, they will not act. And that's where we're going to change. Okay? All right. Very, very good. Thank you, Frank. Um, next question we have on the chat. And Frank, I am writing my wedding vows currently. Wedding to be in August and signing DC. Is there anything ambiguous or tricky about the word vow? Yeah, I'm going to have a look at the meaning of it in the uh, positive law, but no. No, there's nothing tricky in vow. And, uh, and yeah, go and have a look at that. And, and go and have a look also ecclesiastical to see the um, sacrament of matrimony, which is embedded in the um, Roman concept of marriage. So what Rome did was they took the ancient sacrament or the ancient rite of matrimonium and then wrapped it in a commercial contract, which is called Mariago, which involves three parties, the man, the woman, and the church and state. So it is a three-party contract. Uh, so how are you saying to not have to deal with the, the state? Why should there be a, th a three-party contract? Because uh, they they state that if you don't enter into a three party, it's a basically it's <clears throat> it's commercial um, thuggery. If you don't enter into a three party commercial contract, um, then they regard your relationship as being unlawful and illegal, and that you have no rights, and that they can come and in some places they can come and arrest you, or at the very least take uh, your children away. And uh, this, unfortunately, is um, one of the first areas that they enclosed in terms of ancient rights was marriage. Hmm. Okay, well, yeah, that's a, that's a sticky one. <laughs> we could kind of go on on that one because... Yeah, we'll come, we'll come back to that. But the, the way to do it is... <clears throat> I mean, we've spoken about communities, and I, I spent the last two weeks updating the uh, the charters for the unions, which are now updated. And on new review, I'm not too sure if Gerald has updated them yet, but there are PDFs of the charters of the various unions. <clears throat> and in that, the idea is that a community should be able to, like the Jewish community, have recognised their sacraments by the state and that is the way that in future I hope we will be able to help people by having the union of their uh, of men and women uh, recognized by the by the community and then simply giving a notice to that to the, the broader uh, uh, non Eucadian community uh, that diminishes that state's uh, ability to come tramping in there and uh, challenge the rights of the family and uh, the rights of the children, but that's going to take you know weeks and months as the communities develop. But we'll talk about marriage again. I think I think it warrants its own discussion about some of these other contracts like marriage and licences again, uh, and other things that they do as well as tax and and I think we promise we'll talk about passports as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, as marriage, uh, I think we covered that is not really the correct term, it's a union. Um, so to keep that separate and away out of the state, it's, and, and they've always, well, they were in the past, uh, recorded in family Bibles as well as... Well, uh, correct. And, and, and it, is, it is the ancient rite of matrimonium, not marriage. Marriage right. was created in the 13th century. As I mm -hmm. said, it's a three-party contract. And marriage comes from two Latin words, mari, being see, and a go, meaning overseer, manager, controller. The mari is uh, the Vatican, 
the ago is Venice. 